Computers keep changing the world, but their power and safety is limited by their rigid design. The T2 Tile project works for bigger and safer computing using Living Systems principles. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. This is the 32nd T Tuesday update. Let's get into it. So last week we had the assembly of the first T2 tile ring. In the way that we view things, a ring is one unit, whatever it happens to be. In this case, it was a tile with six other units around it. So seven units total making a ring. Uh, um, we got it working. There's a lot more left to do, but that was pretty exciting. And uh, I made a sort of little silent video for it because uh, I had to leave early to do this traveling that I'll talk about this week. And so it was kind of a little bit short and a little bit punchy and I found some free music that I could put on it and so forth. And of course, it's actually doing pretty well. Uh, it, over the last 10 videos, the world's first T2 tile ring has been the number one uh, uh, video in terms of number of views, not in terms of number of minutes watched because it's very short. And this is, of course, the standard problem that uh, shorter and punchier makes for better video viewing and more success than these longer uh, videos with all the professorial digressions like this one uh, that I, I do uh, from week to week. The problem is, is that short and punchy takes a lot more work and a lot more time for me than just showing up for class. <laughs> like this is uh, uh, and talking so it's just a fundamental trade-off with not enough hours in the day since that time uh, we went off to Vienna Austria for this Pioneers 19 it's a startup festival emphasizing uh, startups in Europe uh, I'll talk about that in the coming week uh, what it's really about for me is it's time to do uh, more software level of things that we got a ring built last week and now have enough tile and enough tiles to build three lotuses. A lotus is a ring with an extra layer around it, one unit plus six around that, plus 12 around that for a total of 19 in a lotus. Um, and I do not want to actually build those all up until I've cleaned up the software build, uh, the install that we did for that. So that's coming up. It's sort of system admin stuff, Linux stuff, packages, all that kind of thing. Uh, um, not that exciting in the grand scheme of things, but the next step in the series of many steps. In addition, coming up this coming Saturday, four days from today, we're going to have the second T2 tile public project public meeting. The theme, the goal of the meeting, is how should we explain this stuff? Uh, one of the things I learned from doing the pioneers, no matter how hard I try in a 15 minute talk or whatever it is, it's really, really hard to get across an idea that is sort of, you know, that flips over so many cards at once, that blows up so many ideas at once. And even people who were excited about it, and there were a bunch of people who thought it was pretty interesting and pretty cool, and they came up afterwards and had comments and questions, which was great. Uh, um, that, you know, very few people had gotten through, no, it's a little bit more serious than that. Uh, uh, so uh, I'd like to discuss that with folks. Uh, noon Mountain Time, the same time the T2 Tile, uh, T Tuesday updates release or try to release this coming Saturday. Uh, the, the live stream, I have a redirector link, animate.us slash T2PM11, uh, T Tuesday update, public meeting number 11. Uh, um, if you want to just show up at the live stream and chat, that'd be great. We'll try to do a better job than we did on the first one of integrating the text chats coming on the live stream into the discussion. Now that I understand a little bit more about how it works, if you if you're actually brave enough and you think you might have fun and it might might have something to contribute to actually be one of the talking heads, come on over to the Gitter uh, chat room and and hit me up and let's talk. Uh, uh, there's certainly room for one or two or three more talking heads. Uh, if you'd like to join in I would love to have you so that's coming up on Saturday all right so uh, so Vienna we had never been to Austria or Vienna we got a time for a little bit of sightseeing we saw these marvelous old churches uh, uh, right and there's there's me seeing the church uh, um, we saw the city from the hills uh, surrounding it uh, we saw chamber music in a chamber. <laughs> it was very nice. Uh, we got, uh, you know, we saw great art explained to us by an art historian, which was actually pretty interesting. Uh, uh, oh, and <clears throat> we went to visit a monument to Ignaz Semmelweis, who's sort of one of my personal tragic hero 
cautionary figures. If you don't know about Semmelweis, uh, he was a doctor that sort of first put it together that uh, disease could be spread from one patient to another by doctors. And when he was in charge of the hospi hospital in, in Vienna, he put in a policy that said, you know, you had to wash your hands in this nasty chlorated, whatever it was, solution between going from one patient to another. And in particular between going from the autopsy to the maternity ward. And when this was put in place, uh, you know, maternal and, and infant deaths dropped dramatically. Doctors didn't like it and there was no actual theory because the germ theory of disease hadn't been built up at that point about why this would work. When Semmelweis was uh, out as director of the hospital, the next director abolished this policy of washing the hands and maternal and infant death went right back up. Most of the monuments to Semmelweis are in Budapest and Hungary. Uh, that's where he was born, I think. I'm not entirely sure. So he, he didn't have actually all that much success in the end in Vienna, and he went back to Budapest. And, and the, the tragic thing is, is that, you know, he really wasn't believed much in his own time. And he died young in an insane asylum. Oh, uh, uh, so in Vienna, there is a, a hospital, it's a working hospital for, for a, a women's clinic for, for having babies that has this monument at it. So we, we, we schlepped out, uh, uh, from the center of the city away from all the tourists to spend a moment with Ignaz Semmelweis. So he's a, he's a hero and a warning note to me that, you know, if, when you try to spread ideas that are before their time, uh, you need to be prepared to not get too far with it. And, you know, I mean, he had women and children dying. I, I, I don't have that with hardware determinism, at least not nearly as directly. Um, so it's important uh, for me to remember some of Weiss as far as <laughs> perspective and trying not to die in an insane asylum. You know, of course, when, when some of Weiss was my age, he'd been dead for 15 years or something like that. So anyway... We did that. Uh, um, and we saw the Hofburg Palace. There were plenty of tourists at this. Uh, this thing is absolutely immense. It's, you know, a whole city block or more. It just goes to show what can happen if you have an empire for a couple of centuries. We had to visit it because that's, in fact, where this Pioneers Festival took place. My role in the thing primarily was to give this keynote, which ended up call, being called Future Computing and Artificial Life. Uh, and... <clears throat> Uh, yeah, here I am in the speaker's lounge, uh, which is just one of these rooms before the talk. And all the whole place is just filled with all this gilded stuff everywhere. I mean, I guess they pulled out the really expensive stuff when they lease it out to conferences and so forth. Uh, um, here's another view of the speaker's lounge. Uh, you know, these guys knew how to do high ceilings. There was also uh, monitors in a couple of places that had live feed so you could watch what was happening going on on stage while you were uh, in the lounge or backstage and so forth. This is the door to the backstage. This is the <coughs> ramp that, you know, you go through the, the blackout curtains and you climb up this thing to get on the stage. And that's what I did. Uh, so here I was giving my talk. Uh, I freaked out a little bit because I thought it was a 20 minute talk. And it, it, in the end it was, but it was really supposed to be 15 plus five, which I knew and forgot. But the, the, the timer that was running on the throwback monitors when I got there was 15 minutes and already counting. So I was a little bit rushed. Arr, arr, arr. So it was okay. It wasn't the best. wasn't the worst. Starting the talk, uh, ending the talk, uh, um, and and that was that. But that was the first day of the conference. On the second day of the conference, my second thing I was supposed to do was to be on this AI feud, uh, and the topic of the feud, which none of us... <laughs> team picked was should AI take over the world and we were assigned teams. I was one of three people assigned to the pro position. Yes, AI should take over the world. Um, so uh, I, I, there's going to be pictures, official pictures from Pioneers, I guess, later in the week, and maybe there'll be video, I'm not sure. This is a tweet from Good AI, which was one of the companies that are based in Prague, uh, and uh, Olga Afanasjeva, I'm sorry, uh, uh, um, uh, who we met was on the 
con team against it. So she's giving an answer there. And I'm there with Dileep George and Nell Watson, who we can't see. So he, he, here we are, the pro team. AI should take over the world. And it was uh, Olga and Babak Hojat, who was the guy that got me into this whole thing to begin with by getting me invited to this thing. And Jan Talin, who was one of the original programmers, right, who wrote Skype. Uh, and he's now, among other things, uh, one of these guys who are sort of trying to warn society about the dangers of AI and how super intelligence could wipe us all out and turn us into pets or or, or robot food or whatever it is. And we none, none of that really came up during the feud on stage because the structure was really kind of fairly rigid and it was just a minute here, a minute there and so forth. Uh, uh, but as it turned out, after the feud, back in that speaker's lounge, Jan and I and Nell Watson and Olga were just sort of sitting around and Jan and I kind of got into it. <laughs> It, uh, about whether the sort of singularity and the AI superintelligence disaster was actually something to be thinking about or whether the entire problem needed to be reframed a different way. Uh, um, and uh, it was really it was really pretty good. It was really fun. I don't know if I moved uh, any hearts or minds uh, really in the room there amongst us, but there was a lot of actual content and a lot of, uh, you know, collegial pushing back and forth. It was really great, and I really wish we had recorded it, but it was just one of those things that you had to be there. So that was fun. That kind of, you know, really made a, a lot of it sort of worth, worth it right there for me. So, uh, uh, that was Vienna. Um, and other news, uh, we saw last week, we built a ring that was seven tiles. There was actually 10 tiles in the box that that built up during the fast motion section. Uh, um, now I have picked up an additional, uh, 50 more. Whoops. Uh, we got uh, another 50 circuit boards here ready to go for a total of 60. Um, I don't actually want to, like I said, uh, sit down and burn the software on all those things until we have a slightly happier peach, uh, software load, a little bit more caught up load like that. But we are making big progress. That's all great. Now, we cannot actually connect all of those tiles to each other unless we have a lot more inter-tile connectors. And as we speak, the PD, the power plus data, the connectors that are getting used, of course, see now I don't have any here because they're all tied up in the ring, uh, um, are getting uh, the circuit boards, not just the circuit boards, but even mounting the parts onto them are happening uh, uh, as we speak. And this was uh, some stuff that we heard about a couple of weeks ago, all the horrible tr trouble I had trying to find uh, um, the right size socket, the right size header to connect the tiles uh, on these um, things together. Uh, and uh, did all the measurements and so forth. Eventually, after a big long moan and groan, it, it was I made the decision to just go with this sort of super expensive part that I had been trying to do better all along. But by then they only had 565 of them in quantity and I needed over 900. Uh, but I, I told the, the manufacturing guys, just go ahead and get those. And they said, it's okay, we'll, we'll do 25 out of 30 panels because that's all we have enough parts for and then we can do the other five later so that'll produce uh, over 300 of the uh, power plus data connectors which will get a lot or most of the build of tiles done uh, uh, and they bought out the things that uh, immediately went to zero uh, available now I didn't really know what was going to happen next at this point you know they said they were going to buy it I sent them some more money to cover the difference between the expensive part and the cheap part and then nothing but this past week something <laughs> Uh, I got email from them uh, saying, you know, uh, here are, here's the sample circuit board. Uh, um, and it was actually kind of interesting. So each circuit board, the way they built it, has 15 inner tile connectors, three by five. Uh, um, and they also sent one, uh, a sample showing the parts mounted on it, saying, you know, was this correct? Should I, should I, they go ahead? And I had to look real close to make sure the keys are both pointing in the right direction, but it looks like they are, and that the, the part number, the part is not extending over the edge of the board, and it looks like it isn't, it looks like it's fine. And so I said, <laughs> actually, this is the first time I use this autocomplete in Gmail where it writes the mail for you. Looks good, please proceed. 
I sent it off. I felt like such a worldly businessman because I did all of this from the uh, uh, top of a, you know, hotel top bar overlooking uh, Vienna while we were having a drink or two to celebrate having done all the business and the Pioneer stuff. So they are now, as far as I know, uh, finishing 300 inner tile connectors. I have now 3D printed approximately, I'm doing it by I'm counting them by weight now, 300 of the tabs that will mount one tab per assembly thing to put all this stuff together. We'll talk next week about more of the mechanical issues about how we're going to actually physically manage these many tiles uh, and get them together so that we can handle them and put them together and so on. Uh, and that's the manufacturing. I'm going to try to keep these things short rather than just blab on until the class, uh, the class bell rings at 20 minutes. So we're going to call it here. Uh, um, the next... T Tuesday update will be out in a week. Uh, uh, between now and then, we have the public meeting. I encourage you, if you can, uh, come join us live. If not, it'll be there, of course, uh, after the live stream is done for people to look at and just as part of posterity. Whether it's a posterity that anybody's ever going to be interested in knowing about, we'll find out. Hope to see you next week.